Și pe primul punct la ordinea de zi avem The first item on the agenda this morning is a statement from the Council and Commission on the fight against racism, xenophobia, homophobia and other forms of intolerance. Minister Korchok, if you're ready, go ahead, sir. The President, uh, Commissioner, Honorable Members of uh, European Parliament, you have invited the Council to intervene on a topic of common concern, how to combat racism, xenophobia, homophobia and other forms of intolerance. I can say we very much share your preoccupation. The evidence from different sources, such as the EU Agency for Fundamental Rights and the Council of Europe confirms an alarming increase of intolerance and hatred in Europe. There might be several reasons explaining this worrying phenomenon, but let me be clear on this. There can be no justification for it. The EU has adopted specific legislation on combating intolerance and hatred, in particular the 2008 framework decision on combating racism and xenophobia. The Presidency is aware that the Commission is currently looking into the national laws of the Member States to assess the framework and to ensure its correct implementation. Only a few months ago, in June, the Council reminded Member States of the need to ensure the effective transposition and implementation of the framework decision and other relevant laws at national level to counter the plight of hate crimes. In addition, the Council asked Member States to develop effective methods to report and ensure proper recording of hate crimes. It is also worth mentioning that the Council has adopted a directive that prohibits discrimination on grounds of racial or ethnic origin. It has been in place for more than 15 years and it is an important tool in the fight against racial discrimination. As for the future, we need to combine our actions and strengthen the existing cooperation between institutions. In this context, I'd like to recall the important step made last June when the Council responded positively to the Commission's list of actions to advance LGBTI equality. The Council invited the Commission to promote the measures outlined in that list and report regularly on the progress achieved. The Council has likewise invited the Member States to take action to combat discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation and gender identity. The Council has also consistently supported the efforts of the EU and its Member States to improve the situation of the Roma, which is Europe's, last, which is Europe's largest ethnic minority. Moreover, in the context of inter-institutional cooperation, the Council has supported the ambitious plan of the new Commission high-level group seeking to develop with Member States concrete practices and tools to improve responses to racism, xenophobia and other forms of intolerance. We also welcome the ongoing EU-level dialogue with major IT companies in cooperation with Member States to address online hate speech. Last but not least, we should remember and comment, comment the remarkable work done by the Fundamental Rights Agency in this field. Let me stress once again that racism, xenophobia, homophobia and other forms of intolerance are incompatible with our common values and principles. According to the, to the legal framework in place, they can even constitute a crime that should be prosecuted. There is indeed no exception from this for politicians abusing their freedom of expression by inciting to violence or hatred. Our role, and on this I count on your support, is to remind ourselves of our responsibility for what we say. Words have power, including the power to harm. For this reason, freedom of expression has its limits. It is our common responsibility to find the right balance and this is never an easy task. I look forward to your debates, honorable members, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Minister. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
Um, good, good morning. Uh, Commissioner Yoruba sends her apologies for being unable to attend uh, this morning. Uh, she, she asked me if I could replace her and uh, I'm glad to do so. Uh, increasing fear and high rates of verbal and physical violence against ethnic, religious or other minorities across Europe are and remain a major concern. As uh, we never get tired of reiterating, the European Commission condemn all manifestations of racism, xenophobia, homophobia and all other forms of intolerance as these are incompatible with the values and principles upon which the European Union is founded. And I personally believe that we all collectively and individually have the duty to fight against intolerance and hatred and reject all of its expressions. Political and opinion leaders bear in this regard a particularly important responsibility since racist, xenophobic and other attitudes of intolerance expressed by, by leaders are by their very nature incompatible with the responsibilities they are called upon to fulfill. They also contribute to a climate in which hatred and intolerance become normalized. History should have taught us to be wary. But for those who live in the here and now, very recent events have shown that this is not simply a theoretical issue, but a very real danger. I commend the efforts of this place, the European Parliament, in ensuring that incitement to hatred pronounced by its members is taken seriously and addressed. Public condemnation of racism and xenophobia by the authorities, political parties, civil society contributes to acknowledging the seriousness of these phenomena and to actively fighting against racist and xenophobic speech and behaviour. In the Commission, prevention and fight against racism, xenophobia and all other forms of intolerance are shared priorities. The fact that we devote, uh, devoted the first annual colloquium on fundamental rights to combating racism and intolerance last year reflects that commitment. The Commission appointed two Commission coordinators to contribute to combating hate crime, hate speech and intolerance by engaging and listening to communities' concerns with regards to two particular forms of racism and xenophobia uh, which have reared their heads, uh, anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim hatred. Uh, one illustration, in 2015, uh, Jews were the target of 40% of all racist crimes committed in France. Uh, and as the November Fundamental Rights Agency report on hate crime and the current migration situation uh, puts it, uh, Muslims experience increased hostility as they are often perceived as perpetrators or sympathizers of terrorist attacks or for being part of a refugee movement seen as threatening safety and security. The Commission is acutely aware of this developing narrative uh, and will continue to speak out uh, forcefully against such stigmatization and incitement to hatred against certain communities. We're also working with member states to ensure they effectively enforce the legislation criminalizing illegal hate speech with particular regard to the EU's framework decision on combating racism and xenophobia by means of criminal law, uh, which concerns, as you know, the public incitement to violence and hatred on grounds of race, color, religion, descent, national or ethnic origin. This legislation applies to incitement to violence or hatred online and offline, including statements by political and opinion leaders. In the bilateral dialogues we have with member states to ensure the correct transposition and implementation of this instrument, we've raised a series of issues and concerns. Uh, as a result, in the past two years, six member states made amendments to their criminal law to bring their legislation in line with the framework decision. Commissioner Yurova strongly reiterated the importance of ensuring correct transposition and effective implementation of the instrument uh, at the Justice and Home Affairs Council on the 14th of October and urged national governments to do everything possible to ensure that national provisions can be swiftly and fully aligned to the EU rules and just as importantly that they are applied in practice. Member States law enforcement authorities and courts remain competent to investigate, prosecute and try individual cases of hate speech and hate crime. So it's only working together with the Member States and other key actors including civil society that we can make a real difference on the ground supporting national efforts to ensure implementation of the rules 
and to set up effective policies to prevent and combat this phenomenon. It's a matter of building the necessary commitment, capacity and making available resources and tools. The EU High Level Group on Combating Racism, Xenophobia and Other Forms of Intolerance is a unique platform for the exchange of best practice, guidance, strengthening cooperation and synergies, bringing together the key actors, civil society, community representatives, EU agencies, in particular the Fundamental Rights Agency, and relevant international organizations, including the UN, OSCE, and the Council of Europe. The engagement of the European Parliament intergroup against racism with this high-level group is very welcome. We need to join our efforts to achieve common objectives. Uh, the group is focusing on issues such as how to improve awareness, enhance the effectiveness of investigations and prosecutions, better address underreporting, and ensure adequate victims' support. The group's discussing forms of uh, intolerance in order to develop and improve targeted responses. One priority for the high-level group is to help all member states develop sound methodologies for recording and collecting data on hate crimes, which can often go unreported or get mistaken for other offences. This work is carried out by a specific subgroup led by the EU Agency for Fundamental Rights, and that met for the first time in October. We've also taken important steps to counter illegal hate speech on the internet. A code of conduct on countering, on countering illegal hate speech online was agreed by the Commission with Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft and YouTube in May this year. Uh, and we will present a preliminary assessment of the work in this area uh, on the 7th of December. We're also looking at how to support further the role of the media and ethical journalism in promoting fundamental rights and to ensure that a pluralistic media environment can foster political debate on crucial issues for democratic societies. These and other related issues were at the heart of the discussion at this year's annual colloquium on fundamental rights, which first Vice President Franz Timmermans hosted together with Commissioners Ertinger and Jourova uh, earlier in November. Furthermore, we've consistently supported concrete projects to prevent racism, xenophobia, homophobia and other forms of intolerance under the Rights, Equity and Citizenship Programme. Through the new call for proposals, which is now open, uh, we're making available €6 million Euro for projects in this area. In addition, the Radicalisation Awareness Network continues to support frontline practitioners and civil society actors to effectively address the challenges of radicalisation and polarisation at a local level. Practitioners are concerned about how violent extremist racist groups uh, on one hand or Daesh on the other exploit the refugee crisis to promote their own poisonous narratives. Within the RAN, practitioners are developing practical approaches and ways to address and prevent polarization in schools and local communities with the objective of supporting a cohesive and inclusive society and reaching out to all communities. They will look into more effective ways of countering different types of extremist propaganda, including xenophobic propaganda, also drawing on the expertise within the European Strategic Communications Network. Everybody should be able to enjoy their fundamental rights. We're all entitled to respect of our right to non-discrimination, to human dignity, to life, to integrity of the person, to protection from violence. That's why the high-level group will also include exchanges on the intolerance and violence suffered by members of the LGBTI community. All that said, notwithstanding our efforts and the results we've achieved so far, we know there's a lot more to be done. We are ready to report regularly on the progress made and evaluate the need for further actions, and we count on your continued support as well as your constructive engagement. Thank you. We thank you, Commissioner. Um, and now we move to the list. Mergem la listă. Și am să rog la început pe doamna Gala. We'll now take the speaker's list. First of all, Mrs. Gala, a minute and a half. Commissioner, Minister, everything which, which instigates heat and strengthens intolerance and violence is unacceptable in society, on paper and in practice. On the other hand, I deplore that very often, very 
often uh, EU decision makers do not raise their voice in intolerance against ethnic minorities, national minorities. As a member of and co-chair of the et of the intergroup on ethnic minorities, I'd like to call your attention on the intolerance uh, which, hap which is happening in EU member states ag against EU citizens who have always been living in their uh, countries. The discrimination in the press and hatred against them, the uh, ab abolition of prohibition of the use of their national symbols and the limitations of the use of their national languages. These we should raise our, vo our voice against and the European Commission should focus on these issues because intolerance against uh, traditional ethnic minorities who are EU, mem EU citizens that they are second-rate citizens in their own countries. That's their feeling. Thank you, Mrs. Fayon. Europa se sooča s porastom rasizma, ksenofobije, homofobije, transfobije in drugih oblik nestrpnosti. Pretresa me, da je bilo po podatkih Transgender Europe zgor v zadnjem letu po svetu ubitih skoraj 300 transpojnih ljudi. Brexit in ameriške volitve pa sta še dodatno... There is no English translation. There is English translation, but we were unfortunately cut off. Yes, it works. Go ahead. Europe is faced with a rise in racism, xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia and other forms of intolerance. I am shaken by the fact that, uh, according to the organization Transgender Europe, only over the past year, over 300 transgender persons were killed. Brexit and the American elections only additionally boosted various forms of hate speech and intolerance. These and other forms of hatred very much poison dialogue and cooperation between people. They're often the product of various ideologies and histories and may mainly mostly hurt the most vulnerable groups. Also, my country, Slovenia, is faced with a rise in intolerance. I regret the fact that individuals exploit the plight of people to stimulate intolerance and uh, disseminate untruths. Attacks on refugees, uh, religious buildings or institutions favoring intercultural dialogue are truly perverse actions which I very much condemn. Prejudices and fears have to be addressed through education and uh, through effective legislative actions and policies. Certain member states are still inadequately implementing framework decisions and do not provide adequate protection from racist and uh, xenophobic hate speech and hate crimes. The time will come when history will judge us and each and every one of us will have to ask ourselves which side of history we want to be on and what we have done for this. Thank you. Even soon minute. Thank you, Voorzitter, Commissaris. Thank you, President, Commissioner. I want to stress that Everyone is born with equal human dignity and rights, the quality is the basis of a civilized society. Europe must express that effectively with protection where it's necessary. Living free and equal has to be for everyone. Some groups and individuals have experienced more than others that their uh, e equality is under pressure. LGBTI people are a vulnerable group. Ten years ago, a group of international human rights experts put together a, a chart of, of principles with specific reference to uh, sexual preference and identity. Ten years later, they are as relevant as ever in quite a few EU countries. LGBTI people are discriminated against. But you can never use religion as, a, as an excuse for discrimination, whether it be against LGBTI people or uh, people from other religious or ethnic minorities or people with disabilities. Tolerance is not, not enough. Inclusion has to be our goal. Doamna Bierder, 2 minute and 30 seconds. 
Thank you. We all know Niemöller's poem. First they came for the communists, the socialists, and the Jews, and how he lamented he had not spoken out to, for them till there was no one left to speak out for him. This was Europe 65 years ago, but now we see that we must speak out again. It's happening to those others, whoever they are. In June in the UK had the most diverse, diver, di, diverse referendum campaigns. Our Equality and Human Rights Commission said that the referendum campaign had, I quote, legitimized hate. During the campaign, a young MP doing her job was shot and stabbed to death by a man consumed with hate, who shockingly, on his conviction, was supported by 60,000 tweets. Two months after the EU referendum, Mr. Arik jo Joswick, a Polish national, was assaulted and killed by six teenagers in what was believed to be a hate crime. In the, following, or the weeks following the Brexit result, reported hate crime rose by 58% compared to the year before. But it's not just in the UK. Politicians and leaders on both sides of the Atlantic uh, and across the Union are again peddling uh, hate and fear. It gives permission to others who feed on this bile, who are deranged enough to think that it's acceptable. Many EU citizens living in the UK are very scared, as are those seeking refuge or who have migrated elsewhere in the EU. What has the UK government's response been? To ask companies to report to them their foreign-born employees. What message is this sending? This is not the Britain I know. This is not the Europe that I know. The Britain I know is outward-looking, decent and tolerant. The Britain I know stands up for everyone, no matter what their skin colour, what their language, who they love or who they worship. And it was this ethos that founded the European Union as Europe recovered from the horrors that inspired Niemöller's poem. But in this sea of rising intolerance, there are glimmers of hope. After the death of Mr. Joswick, the Polish centre in London was deluged with flowers and messages of sympathy. Brexit or no Brexit, racist, homophobic and hateful speech must be publicly and forcibly con condemned by us all. And I, as a Liberal Democrat, will continue to do just that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Allow me to applaud. Um, Doamna Spinelli, one minute. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, President. The Treaty, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, the Istanbul Convention, these are the ways we fight racism, xenophobia, and violence against women. There's an urgent need sp specifically to condemn today Islamophobia, anti Semitism, anti Roma feeling, homophobia which are all poisoning our countries and even the institutions we share. It's a serious state of affairs that attacks on uh, women, gays and uh, Chinese people are becoming daily reality now. And if look at the, the language people use. We're not talking about abstract values here. This is something very palpable. If there's such a thing as an EU demos, it's because of an agreement on our norms and standards. Anyone who violates that cannot uh, claim cultural specificities to justify that. I think everyone has more than one strand to their identity. You belong to, m to more than one community. If you try and push people to, towards a single identity, that promotes violence. We need better re respect for our uh, standards and inclusion. Thank you, President, members of the Commission and the Council. What we've seen over the last half year, and colleague Bierde has referred to what has been happening in the UK, especially after Brexit, Polish workers, people who have been, came to, to the UK to work, have been attacked physically. And then also, during already the Brexit campaign and afterwards, attacks against black UK citizens, many of them born in the UK, have increased. We have seen all over this continent a rise of racism, anti-Semitism, homophobic uh, violence and hate speech, Islamophobia, xenophobia, and also sexism rising. 
this is something that both Commission and Council have to tackle more uh, urgently. And I welcome both of you speaking out and welcoming the Directive uh, Against the Discrimination on er Ethnic Origin and also the list of actions against homophobia. But the problem is member states are not delivering as much as they should. When we have in Hungary, for example, a mayor of Jobbik um, making sure with a decree that in his city there shouldn't be any propagation of, for example, same-sex marriage or family as anything other than marriage or parent-child relationship or banning muadzins or other issues. I mean, how can you not go stronger towards uh, member states in order that they implement everything we have? And to the Commission, Equal Treatment Directive has been a promise of this Commission to be implemented. It is not happening. We need it urgently in order to make sure that this continent provides to its citizens what it promises. Thank you. Would you accept a blue card, Mrs. Lunacek? From our colleague, Mr. Shonyi. Yes? Okay. Mr. Shonyi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, colleague, you mentioned Hungary, which is my country. I think the situation is a bit worse there than as you depicted, because it's not only extreme mayors who do this, but the government itself, the government of Mr. Orban, is instigating xenophobia and hatred, often fund funded by EU money. Do you think there is anything we can do against these processes. Thank you, Mr. Chani, for giving me the opportunity to speak 30 seconds more. And yes, for sure, the example I mentioned was just one of the most recent things where also the government of Mr. Orban is not doing anything against. And I agree with you, and we have been addressing this issue, the way the Orban government is working in Hungary, not protecting people of whatever different differences that people might have. So the one thing that we have voted in this parliament, the pact on democracy, rule of law and fundamental rights is something that should be implemented because that would help in order to move governments that are not adhering to European values to move them away from that and get them in line again with what we have decided on together. Thank you, Mrs. Wimberg. Thank you, President. Many accusations are often leveled, uh, racism, uh, xenophobia, populism. These are terms that have a very clear meaning in a different setting, but if uh, a people wish to express their clear views on immigration, then those uh, words lose their meaning. Is it racism to want checks on immigration, to want women and children to be safe? Is it racist to love one's country and culture? Our citizens have seen enough to warrant their concerns, and that cannot be viewed as populism. The EU acts as if it is fighting intolerance and will welcome in millions of immigrants from intolerant cultures. How can you ask our citizens to be more tolerant in the face of intolerance? From our colleague, Mrs. Grappini. Yes, okay, Mrs. Grappini, please. Thank you, President. My dear colleague, you asked a question, is it uh, racism to want to protect one's culture? No, I would answer, but I also have a question for you. Can we not promote our cultures without running down others and excluding others? Thank you for your question. I can only comment on my country, Sweden. We are losing our own culture in the wake of immigration in schools. We no longer have a link to
to the church and schools so as not to exclude specific groups. We're denying our own culture to adjust to others. One minute and 30 seconds. Thank you, Voorzitter. Afgelopen weekend konden hier jong. Thank you, President. Last weekend, Mr. Junger paid homage to the di dictator uh, Castro as a father of freedom. And under his leadership, the EU is becoming a dictatorship where there's no uh, room for different opinions. You can only uh, uh, speak if, if you say something politically correct. But, but our freedoms were hard won. Anyone who, who disagrees with them is, is dubbed as racist or xenophobic. This is a, a way of muzzling the opposition. The Brussels elite continues to uh, paint patriots uh, as extremists. But, President, what about the, the millions of voters? Are you, you going to dub them as being racist and xenophobic if they're just because they're against Islamic t terrorism and unbridled immigration? President, we can see in the Netherlands that the elite is in encroaching upon freedom of expression. It's not just in Turkey. The, the leader of the opposition in the Netherlands, Gert Wilders, represents millions of uh, Dutch voters. He's not going to allow himself to be muzzled. We need, if we need to show that the citizens that we're stronger than this uh, politically correct uh, elite with its cultural relativism. Doamna Dodds, one minute. Mike, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Hate crime is unacceptable, and each day we see an increase in these despicable actions right across the EU. In my constituency of Northern Ireland, some great work is being done to combat the causes. And recently, I was contacted by a local skills SME, which works with employers developing recruitment models that are fairer to migrant workers. In many cases, workers may have the professional skills and experience, but the qualifications they have achieved elsewhere uh, are not recognized. This often leads them to become socially and economically isolated. It is vital that every citizen has the capacity to make their own contribution, and this is critical to changing the unwanted perceptions in society. I um, am saddened today to hear many in this chamber refer to the result of the British referendum as a victory for racism or xenophobia. I, like the majority of people in uh, the United Kingdom, was heartbroken by the death um, of Joe Cox. Uh, the British people are a welcoming people. Our communities are some of the most diverse across the continent. Crimes like this are abhorrent to the vast and overwhelming majority of our people. In choosing Brexit, Thank you. we simply rededicated, rededicated our commitment Thank to you. Uh, free from the unnecessary disorder of Brussels. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Holmeyer. One minute, she traces the second. President. President, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, I think the issue we're discussing here this morning is not really suitable uh, for launching political attacks against one another or seeking to draw political advantage. It's a very serious matter for people who have suffered religious persecution, for example, or who are members of an unrecognized minority. It's also difficult for people who are disabled or have a certain sexual orientation, uh, uh, features of their lives that make it difficult for them to live a normal life because of prejudice. Uh, these phenomena uh, happen in all our countries. Uh, we have min minorities in all our countries. Uh, we have minorities in all countries in the member states. So I think this is something we should take seriously and not use as a uh, political baseball bat for bashing one another in political terms. I think in this House there's great will to uh, put an end to exclusion, to put a, uh, an end to the disavowal of certain types of minorities in the European Union.
We are democratic parties here in the European Parliament, and I think on such matters we should seek to uh, respect one another and not uh, use these issues as material for electoral campaigns. I think that would be a useful way of working and be useful to the people who suffer from such prejudices. We should stand together on these things. Thank you. Fac un apel la colegi să rămână în timpul, să încerce să se înscrie în timpul acordat, pentru că avem o ședință. Please don't exceed your speaking time, because we have a formal uh, sitting at 11:30, and we still have another item on our agenda. So, Mr. Morris. Thank you, President. It's very clear from this debate that we are acknowledging that we're going through an unprecedented uh, period in our history. Members in this chamber will remember the very optimistic time in which the framework decision on racism uh, was created, in which the Race Equality Directive happened. It was a different time in Europe. But I want to say to those colleagues who mention Brussels in the negative way that they do, that this is a union of values. It is a union of values for those who are rejecting it and those who stay. And that, that binds us together in one very important way. It means that it is very legitimate for us to legislate, to regulate, to say that it is important for all of our citizens, not minorities, by the way, those who are all disabled, a different sexual orientation, uh, those who are a different color, race. These are millions of our European citizens. They deserve protection. And what we don't see is enough implementation by our member states. These values still exist today in these difficult times. And I would say that it increases our value and increases our cohesion here in the European Union if we are determined to make this happen. President, this is not a time for us to retreat on these values. It's a time to do, as Mrs. Bearder said, what needs to be done when we see hatred on our streets. This is not anecdotal. We know because of the legislation we have implemented that we are calculating and seeing because our police forces tell us what is happening on our streets. This is a time to go forward, but I would say finally to the Council, ensure that this horizontal anti-discrimination directive happens so millions of our citizens can be protected in line with the values of this European Union. <laughs> Thank you, President. The initiative against racism, uh, xenophobia and hate speech is problematic because it is driven by your own concerns. You're to fight racism, but also cultural, religious uh, acts are to be removed from any criticism. You're not supposed to address uh, patterns in uh, society. Violence against Jews and um, uh, the, the gay community has seen a rise in Europe. In such cases, should we really turn a blind eye and act as if this were not happening? It is not understandable why other hate messages, such as uh, those of uh, Islam against Christians or uh, the police uh, being targeted in Germany, is not also being prosecuted. So there are double standards being applied. Elections in recent months uh, have shown this, and upcoming elections will do so too. So we're seeing censorship and a restriction in the expression of uh, freedom of expression. Thank you. We're here talking about how to combat racism, homophobia, xenophobia, and other forms of intolerance. And each of us, I think, should begin by looking to their own homeland and then look to this European Parliament. Because often, when we think in terms of racism and homophobia, we think in terms of uh, a bunch of Nazis or skinheads beating up a gay person uh, or a black person. We never think in terms of uh, folks in this Parliament uh, speaking in racist terms or in terms of ministers in this Parliament or commissioners in this Parliament thinking of these terms. Although, often it's in the uh, certain political circles that you find the most repugnant forms of intolerance. You have laws being produced, for example, in Lithuania against uh, homosexuals. 
and there are other examples I could give you. There are um, governments in this European Union speaking out against uh, same-sex marriage, and I think we should also look to ourselves in these matters. Yes. Do you accept a blue card from uh, our colleague uh, Jurek? Yes? Okay, Mr. Jurek. Thank you very much, President. Uh, I found extremely interesting what you said about starting the combat against uh, homophobia and such a similar phenomena in the Parliament here and in our uh, Member States' uh, policies. I want to understand you better. How do you imagine this? So, the European Commission should uh, get involved in the electoral processes in member states or should we finance our preferred political parties so that they can uh, win elections or maybe we should delegalize de certain parties or movements this could be a good form of eliminating those phenomena uh, that you are uh, warning against what i'm saying is this i'm saying that many of the parties represented here in this parliament uh, Conservative parties, social democratic parties, liberal parties, uh, members, parties of the EPP, often they have leaders and presidents and ministers who are coming out with homophobic uh, speeches and policies. Uh, I could mention uh, Commissioner Oettinger in this uh, context, and I would encourage all these people to think about themselves and think about what they're doing at home and not come to this chamber and make such speeches in, in total impunity. Thank you, President. I want to start by um, echoing the, the words of, of Catherine Bearder and also welcoming what the Commission has said. But I'd also point out to some of our colleagues that culture isn't fossilised and changes. I'm sure that we are very grateful we're not living in the Middle Ages at this moment. But I would also join those that have asked the Commission and Council as well to move forward on completing the horizontal anti-discrimination directives and to consider updating the framework decision against racism, xenophobia and anti-Semitism to cover all groups in line with the Victims of Crime Directive. And in terms of other action that we can take, I think it's important that we strengthen the role of the equality bodies in each of our member states. My own member state has seen its budget slashed down by about two-thirds over the last six years. And the valuable work that can be done at the grassroots level is cut away because our equality bodies are not fully independent and cannot carry out their role adequately. Thank you. Um, Doamna Atkinson, one minute. Violence should never be tolerated, but let's get it into perspective. So, Julian, you think hate crimes are underreported. I'll address that. Catherine Bearder cites misleading and anonymous statistics. Most of the so-called hate crime is reported anonymously and sub not subject to independent verification, including the police's site True Vision. Other sites have been set up on social media. There are many. Anyone can log on, push up statistics such as, hate for, such as the hate field left for their own political agenda, as seen in this place. All can be anonymous and not subject to verification. It is very subjective. The attacks on the Polish Cultural Centre in the UK were against a Polish pro-Brexit group. Get it into perspective. Other attacks were registered against goths, punks and some misogyny. Nothing to do with post referendum Britain, so don't label it as such. Brexit and the election of Trump in the US demonstrates across the Western world that people are tired of your political, corrective, multicultural lectures of the establishment. We've Brexited, we can get out of this place and not stop listening to the hate-filled left. And you, Bearder. This, is, this was uncalled for. This was uncalled for. Really. But that's my personal opinion. You have your own personal opinion. You voiced it. I have my personal opinion. I'm voicing it. And I go on and ask Mr. Funtulis to take the floor for one minute and 30 seconds. Dear colleagues, I'd like to ask a question to you. Every morning when you leave home, obviously you lock your door. And that's what you do before going to bed at night. Why do you do that? Are you afraid that somebody might break in, a foreigner? Does that mean that you are xenophobic and racist? You have the right to protect your home. 
and to decide who you will receive as a guest. The same goes for countries. It's not a, a question of xenophobia, but of legality. You consider those who do not agree with your um, dominant uh, liberal ideology as racist, while every day you show what you mean by democracy. Everybody can say what they want if they do not disagree with you. You are never um, concerned about the uh, racism against the natives of Europe. You want to help the refugees and migrants and you discriminate against the other people. You want to impose your ideas. You do not understand what a provocation that is for all those homeless people of uh, Greece. W you help others while they have nothing. You know very well that it is much easier in Greece to be a refugee or an illegal immigrant than to be a Greek without work. They have more access to our health system, which is not true for unemployed people, but the peoples very soon will destroy your logic through their voting. Everybody knows that this will happen and you're afraid of it. Uh, thank you, uh, President, uh, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on the 16th of November last, uh, we celebrated the 21st uh, anniversary of the United Nations Declaration on Tolerance. But in the meantime, there are still many obstacles to tolerance, to full tolerance in the European Union. In 2015, one third of Europeans said that they were not comfortable with uh, uh, son or daughter uh, marrying a Muslim. Rather more than a fifth of the Europeans thought that the LGBT community should not have the same rights as heterosexual people. Also, a fifth of Europeans did not feel comfortable working with a person of gypsy origin. European women uh, were last year, uh, on average, ganging 30% less than men, and many people think this is acceptable. All these data uh, should not be indifferent to us, especially at a time when uh, populism is on the rise everywhere. The Parliament has to carry on doing its work in various areas, combating intolerance. Above all, at a time when populist political speeches are sowing hate and preaching violence. At such a time, we should fear, we fear to reaffirm and make felt that tolerance and non-discrimination are fundamental values of the European Union, both for the Member States and uh, in the external action of the European Union. This is clear in the, treat in the treaties in the Charter of Fundamental Rights and is reflected in community legislation. Thank you very much. Guillaume, one minute. M Madame Guillaume, one minute. Thank you, President. While we've had a framework decision against reason since 2008 and, uh, and some of been fighting against this, hate speech is emerging ever more clearly in the public sphere. We can't uh, uh, allow it to become a day-to-day -day thing. We need to promote the European values. No, diversity, unity and diversity it can't just be an abstraction. There's a lack of curiosity, each man for himself. Uh, in looking Europe, we, we have to act on this. We have to speak out against anyone talking this way, whether it's an ordinary citizen, a, a head of government or a local councillor, whoever it may be. In France, certain local councils uh, um, have s censored posters showing gay couples, supposedly uh, to protect public morals. All forms of, of racism have to be uh, fought. There can't be any hierarchy. We have to form every type of racism. That, that's, that's a way of uh, tackling each facet of racism uh, equally. You, know, you can't suggest that some are, are more unequal than others. One minute. Ms. Cullen, in one minute. Thank you, President. Our topic today is one of the most important of our times. We must defend the human rights and the human dignity of everyone. We have a constant debate on human rights on a global level, and it's easy for us to find a unity and a consensus when we condemn human rights violations that take place far away, but when the central uh, values of the EU treaties are violated within the EU, we start to duck and dodge. Racism, xenophobia and homophobia have keep on increasing in many member states and it's fed by increasing inequality. Hopelessness is a fuel that gives mistrust strength. 
let us not feed this hopelessness. Let us show that the EU is not only about mar not only about markets, the power of money, or the building of walls. That it's about the values that we demand of ourselves and set upon ourselves. To me, uh, Dechowski, one minute. One minute, Mr. Stachowski. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yesterday evening I spoke here about anti-gypsyism in the European Union, but that's just one aspect of racism and intolerance uh, that uh, is so commonplace in the territory of the European Union. Uh, despite uh, the efforts of the European Commission, who has been saying for quite some time that it's necessary uh, to uh, fight against uh, uh, homophobia, uh, intolerance and racism, I'm glad that Commissioner Jourova has announced the creation of a high-level group uh, fighting against uh, racism and intolerance. The European Union uh, must be uh, an example for the rest of the world. Uh, they have to, uh, we, we have to be a leader in uh, this issue. But uh, hearing the speeches of uh, some of my colleagues, I ask myself, uh, uh, aren't we, uh, the MEPs, uh, the politicians, uh, those who create uh, this intolerance, this hate, shouldn't we, the MEPs, uh, think about uh, whether or not we give reason uh, to uh, speeches on the internet and, other, uh, and elsewhere. One minute. Ms. Post, one minute. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Racism and discrimination should never be accepted or normalized because they are violations of democracy and the rule of law. Some doesn't understand it in this chamber. My message is for those who feel uh, threatened and scared due to the normalization of hatred. In the Parliament, I will continue to fight and call out, and I will not stop until Muslims, Jews, and other religious minorities can practice their religion freely. Roma people have full access to their human rights. Black Europeans are protected from Afrophobia. LGBTI people can love who they want. Trans people are able to express who they are. People with disability are threatened equally, treated equally. Refugees are no longer demonized. And violence against women is recognized as a security issue. These are the values that underpin the EU. These are my values that I will fight for in the face of racism and populism in RD, the intergroup, inside the Parliament Mulțumim. and in cooperation with the Commission. Mulțumim. Um, Shogor, one minute. Thank you, Mr. Shogor. I attach great importance to combating any form of intolerance, also because in the EU, even within the EU, we face this phenomenon quite often. For instance, uh, those Eastern European member state workers who, li who work in other countries have to face this phenomenon. I, I could also mention that in my country, uh, we ethnic minorities uh, are sometimes sent by hate speech back to Asia, as they say it also in elections. The press is also responsible for this, but education is extremely important. Let us look into the history books and textbooks. European citizens should acknowledge that the rights of European citizens are due to everyone. If you are talking about European solidarity, it means that we accept each other as Europeans and we do not differentiate across Europeans and other Europeans and Europeans and others. Thank you, Ms. Kienge. One minute. Thank you, President. All member states have incorporated European anti-discrimination provisions in their national legislation, but we've n nonetheless never seen such an upsurge of uh, racist and uh, xenophobic violence and new types of uh, discrimination that member states have still not worked out joint strategies to fight. Legislation on its own is not enough to ensure truly equal treatment social acceptance isn't, isn't enough either to fight this wave of hatred that's going across Europe. What we really need is wider political awareness of the phenomenon so that we can build 
an alternative sociocultural model. The values of pluralism and integration must be seen as a, a shared heritage. We need more incisive action against those who, despite holding a political uh, posts, actually spread in intolerance. Racism can never be a means of political struggle and it has to be condemned. Um, colleagues will now move into the catch the eye phase. Twelve colleagues have asked for the floor. You'll be aware that we only have five minutes for uh, catch the eye, but we'll do our best to take one person from each particular group. And I'll start with uh, Ms. Staras Farragut. Sí, gracias, Presidente. Thank you, President. We have the framework decision from 2008, directives, resolutions, the heart of the treaty itself, uh, always mentioning the fight against racism, xenophobia, calling for equality, human rights, rule of law, human dignity, and democratic freedoms. But there can be no doubt that recent years have seen a rise in intolerance. Intolerance in Europe. As a result, even some governing political parties have been affected, even institutions. We're seeing intolerance uh, against uh, gypsies, we're seeing xenophobia, anti-Semitism, uh, discrimination against those with disabilities, any category that is vulnerable. So I would ask the Commission to do everything within its power to ensure a strategy to fully implement 2008 framework decision. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Ms. Blanco Lopez. Thank you, Chair. We can't shut our eyes to what is happening all around us. Uh, all over Europe, there are movements arising who preach hate because they believe uh, in hating people who are different, who are homosexual, who are a different color from them, or who come from different places. We have a rise of nationalism, racism, xenophobia, homophobia. These are ghosts from the past which we thought we had got rid of and conquered, but they're coming back. And there is violence now being perpetrated against foreigners in our countries. And this shows that no country can regard itself as immune from these phenomena in Europe. We have to fight the rise of hate. The European Commission has a job to do here. So do the member states. Uh, this is only right. And also it's part of the European idea and the upholding of European values. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The uh, past has shown that uh, economic difficulties and recession, prolonged recession, and the economic crisis, and the increase of unemployment, and the increase of unemployment, who believe, uh, make it clear th that they will have more intolerance, xenophobia, and racism these phenomena become even more intense in the countries where there are more refugee flows and in particular illegal immigration. These phenomena move societies toward fragmentation and conflict. In order to fight them we must fight the political decisions and actions which make people poorer, which cause conflicts and mass movements of peoples. If we don't talk about austerity if we don't talk about the regulation of Dublin III, if we don't say that there should be peace in the Middle East and that we should have societies based on solidarity and help and not inhuman competition, we will never manage to fight xenophobia and racism. Thank you, President. Racism and xenophobia have risen significant in Europe. Uh, this is a, a nasty reminder of a past world that we thought we had left behind. As politicians, we should show an example to others. Racism, xenophobia and all types of discrimination must be phenomena in the case of which we have zero, zero tolerance. 
including the way we speak in the parliament. This means that we have to respect all other people without exceptions. Freedom of speech cannot be used as an excuse for treating other people differently and denying them for denying them their rights. I'm glad that the president took a very strong stance in case of racist, racist uh, and other type of intolerant speech in Parliament. I hope that you follow this example in future too. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to congratulate uh, Sir Julian King for his uh, speech and all uh, interventions that agreed because this was a speech that comes directly from enlightenment. However, Sir Julian, the problem is that there are racists and uh, xenophobe people who do not listen to us. Only people that agree with you will understand what you have to say. The others have decided to have their own identity and have put up walls around them. So what do you have to do? We need a social state. We need these people to be in contact with the whole of society. And that concerns citizens, not parties and governments that promote racism. We need a social state. We need a social polity. Work for all. Access to health care, to good health care for all. We need education, good education at all levels. We need media that will not promote populism, that will not depend on governments. That is what we need, Sir Julian. Otherwise, the others will win. We need a political society. Tideus. Thank you, Chair. The uh, obvious uh, incapacity of people, of sorry, governments and uh, politicians to deal with the problems that we have in many countries, and particularly Greece, the uncontrolled uh, arrival of millions of illegal immigrants means that now they have to distort everything to create new ideas and to pretend that they will deal with the issue. We have the reaction of parents, for example, in schools who do not want to accept unvaccinated pupils in school. And this is called racism. If we are against the criminality by illegal immigrants, we are called xenophobics. If we try to face up to the issue of illegal immigration, we are called intolerant. So they try to convince people that they are guilty in order to, to create dissension, and this is against the native peoples of Europe. Yes. Uh, thank you. And Excuse thank me. You. We have a point of order, please. Distributed the catch the eye on the basis of the groups in Parliament. Would it not be more logical to base it on the numerical strength of the groups? For instance, my group is five or six times larger numerically than other groups. And under the Hong system, which is often used in this Parliament, we should uh, be given some consideration for extra speaking under that system. So that is something you may wish to answer now or reflect upon so that there will be greater equality under the Hong system and catch the eye. Thank you very much, Mr. President. You know, if you, if you ask me personally, I would say, you know, that I would prefer to allow everybody to speak and the fact that you are more than others does not mean that the others do not have the right to speak. This was my judgment. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll uh, certainly raise this with other colleagues because as far as I know, there are not uh, precise rules which would get the catch the eye. It's the prerogative of the president. So some other presidents will probably have a different view. But this is mine and I'm trying to explain it. But thank you for your point of view. Uh, we don't want to transform now this debate into another debate, but if you insist... 
I don't want to take the floor in the debate. I just wanted to point out that among the 12 calls and the seven people given the time, there's five minutes difference. In such an important debate on uh, f freedom of speech, I think it would be worth your while to give the people the possibility to speak, all of them, if there is only 12 calls. Thank you. But sometimes, you know, we are under time pressure. And I announced that we have this uh, uh, special session which starts uh, at 11.30. And due to that, you know, we have to sacrifice and try to find the balance. So thank you very much. So, Julian, now you certainly have the floor. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you, to, thank you for organizing this important debate, and thank you to all who spoke. Uh, can, I, can I just for one moment uh, join uh, Ms. Birder and, and Ms. Dodds, who recalled the uh, tragic murder of Joe Cox, a member of the British Parliament, uh, and can I just salute... Uh, her memory uh, and her work uh, promoting tolerance and inclusion. Uh, now, uh, as a number have said, uh, Ms. Moraes, uh, Ms. Gillum, uh, Ms. Holmeyer, amongst others, uh, we are bound together by our values. Uh, and one of those values, key value uh, for me, for us all, uh, is freedom of expression. Uh, we are not talking here about limiting freedom of expression. We are talking about uh, incitement to violence uh, or hatred, uh, which is uh, a crime. Uh, again, um, of course, uh, we should have uh, respect for um, uh, the achievements of previous generations, our, our histories and our cultures. But we also need to be conscious of, of the lessons of history, uh, the tendencies to intolerance, uh, prejudice, uh, and fear, and those we must combat uh, through promotion of tolerance and inclusion. Uh, and we need to work uh, all together and with our member states uh, uh, to pursue that. Um, there have been a number of questions about what the Commission is doing with member states, so can I just answer? Uh, in the course of the last year, uh, the Commission has initiated bilateral dialogues with 24 member states with a view to ensuring full and correct transposition and implementation of the framework decision on racism and xenophobia that we're discussing uh, today. And in the course of those discussions, uh, I'm glad to say uh, that positive progress has been uh, reported, achieved uh, in a number of member states. But there remains more to be done, as I said at the start of this debate. Uh, the Commission has um, begun uh, pre-infringement proceedings against a number of states, member states, where there are still uh, substantive gaps in their implementation uh, of this uh, framework decision. Uh, we're going to continue to engage in a constructive discussion, obviously, with national authorities uh, in line with the principle of, of sincere cooperation, but uh, the Commission will not hesitate to use its power to launch infringement proceedings where these efforts prove unsuccessful. Because, as I said at the beginning, and has been echoed uh, throughout uh, this debate, uh, we are uh, determined to ensure uh, that everyone is able to enjoy their fundamental rights because we are all entitled to the respect of our right to non-discrimination, to human dignity, to life, to integrity of the person, and protection from violence. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner King. And now to end the debate, uh, Mr. Kochok, on behalf of the Council. I have two points that I'd like to make uh, in conclusion. First, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Chairman Moraes and uh, Mrs. Lambert, you referred to the proposal for a horizontal equal treatment directive. Uh, you know that the discussions in the Council are very complex due to proposals and intricacies and the requirement for unanimity. Nevertheless, the Slovak presidency has worked hard since the start uh, of its term and uh, our intention is to present a progress report uh, which we will submit to the Council on the 8th of December. Secondly and more importantly, in my view, I'd like to say that what I said at the beginning, hate crimes, racism and discrimination have no place in our societies and we have to fight it with resolve. 
I believe the problem that uh, we have been discussing this morning here has two dimensions. One, on the one hand, we have legal framework at EU level, Charter of Fundamental Rights, framework decision, and member states, of course, have clear commitments that need to be implemented. But the second dimension of it is that I don't think we can be successful in uh, fighting uh, xenophobia and antisemitism successfully unless we mobilize our citizens to actively stand against those who are spreading hatred in Europe. And to mobilize our citizens means, of course, raising awareness and show courage, a civic courage in protecting those who are victims of acts which we all know are clearly against values we all share. I too believe that we have to bear this civic dimension in mind uh, as well and not only to solely focus on what is the role of institutions. Uh, clearly when we want to fight against these phenomena that clearly undermine our democratic societies. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Minister Minister Korczak, that concludes the debate. We now come to a, a statement by the Vice President of the Commission, High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, uh, on the situation in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, the Commission is here, but her seat is still not free. Commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Let me uh, switch to French. Monsieur le Président, le Parlement européen. Uh, President, the European Parliament on two occasions this year has considered the critical situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. You had uh, resolutions on this in March and July. The Council, in the meantime, uh, also this year adopted two conclusions and uh, Congo will be on the agenda of the Foreign Affairs Council on the 12th of December yet again. Uh, this is an enormous country, obviously, with enormous potential, economically speaking. It has enormous uh, natural resources, enormous potential in terms of human resources as well. The European Union, for a great number of years, has expressed its solidarity with uh, the population in the east of the country. We have channeled uh, humanitarian aid to refugees. 1.5 million people have been displaced. Uh, uh, people are suffering, women are suffering, uh, homosexuals are suffering, minorities are suffering. We have invested also about 40 million euros in this part of the country this year. We are also seeking solutions uh, to the conflict. There are profound causes for this conflict. Uh, and of course there are also economic interests at stake in, in terms of conflict minerals. And also we have to bear in mind the Kimberley uh, uh, initiative uh, uh, and the Great Lakes initiative uh, on the illegal exploitation of natural resources and on the eagle use, use of combat and conflict diamonds. All this is happening in the east of the Congo. We also have the involvement of the Euro United Nations High Commission for Human Rights. It is important that we continue to lend aid to the country, to assist the country, to try and bring peace to the country and then support the country uh, in the post-war or the post-conflict period. Uh, having said that, uh, we have a partnership arrangement with the country which we've now been reviewing and we believe that in order to uh, bring about stability in the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, we have to help it establish democracy. We would call on Mr. Kabila to re respect the limits of his mandate. We would call on him to make sure that the constitution remains in force during the transitional period as uh, we move from one presidency to the next. Uh, a revision of the constitution can only take place if there is a full agreement by all parties so that the transition of the presidency can take place as peaceful as possible. This is why the European Union is involved in a dialogue with Congo facilitated by the African Union. On the 18th of October, uh, the, the, the talks we held uh, still did not lead to a satisfactory solution. Uh, we saw violent effects, uh, events on the 19th of